Alrighty, so it's Iris back again, and I'm not going to waste any time in this intro or video. We're just going to get right to it. So today I will be reviewing the Bobbi Brown Foundation Stick. So I'm going to first talk about its claims, what it's supposed to do, and then I'm going to jump into packaging, shade range, my shade, and then straight into first impressions application, and then the wear test. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and tell you guys the claims. Alrighty, so according to the Sephora website, this is supposed to be any type of coverage that you want. You can make it full, medium, sheer, depending on how much you pack it on. It's suitable for all skin types. The finish is supposed to be satin, radiant, and natural. It says that it's supposed to have smart technology for moisturization, oil control, and that it, and that it is water, sweat, and humidity resistant. All right then, so I'm gonna start a new thing where I'm gonna go ahead and list the main claims kind of here to the side and then at the very end we'll check them off to see if it did it or not. So that is what this foundation is claiming to do. It's basically claiming to be pretty much bulletproof and customizable based on coverage that you want. So next up is the packaging review and demo and then shade range. Okay, so this is the Bobbi Brown Outer packaging and what it comes in. Um, basically it just comes in a nice black packaging this basically tells you what it does. So it says, our iconic foundation stick is formulated to blend seamlessly for all skin tones for a natural looking finish. Ideal for spot or all over coverage in a wide range of shades for all skins from fair to dark. Dermatologist tested. On the back are the ingredients. And then here it is and it's packaging really nice. It's sleek black. Um, little tube with a nice gold right here. Then on the bottom here you will find your shade. Once you remove the cap it also has a nice gold trim. And then this is how much product you get in here. It is the, again the standard .31 ounces and this one is a lot more expensive than the Lancome one um, by a few dollars. This one is 46 for .31 ounces. Again pretty steep for the price but I feel like that's just kind of how high-end foundations kind of tend to price their foundation sticks for the amount of grams you get. Not very fair pricing I would say but I feel like that's just standard. Okay, so the shade I picked up is right home here. I got shade 4.25, which is described as a medium beige with yellow and pink undertones for medium skin. Um, I don't think this is my shade at all. I feel like it's a smidge too light. I am normally um, not pink undertone, so again, I think this is too light. My actual color would probably be Warm Natural, which is 4.5, which is olive toned beige with yellow undertones for medium skin. They just didn't have it in stock, so I went ahead and picked up 4.25. And there is 30 shades to this foundation. I think they did a pretty good job in their light section. Um, the dark section is also pretty good but I feel like it's still lacking a few shades for our darker ladies out there. Okay, so I did already use a pore filling primer. I used the Benefit Pore Professional, and I'm gonna do one side of my face with a brush and one side of my face with a beauty blender. So let's go ahead and do the brush side first. I'm not sure how much to put on, but I'm just gonna swipe and then just kind of hope for the best. Right off the bat, I think this has pretty great coverage. Like when I'm swiping, I feel like it feels a lot thicker and more pigmented than the Lancome one that I tried. Um, I will say it's not as creamy as the Lancome one or as Makeup Forever. Makeup Forever is pretty creamy. This one is a little stiff. Yeah, right now definitely maybe um, a sheer almost medium coverage, but I still think it covered really well compared to this side. I mean, you guys probably can't tell, but at least to me, it did a pretty nice job at covering. So let's go ahead and do this side with the Beauty Blender. So yeah, it's a bit harder to blend with the Beauty Blender, obviously, because, um, I do think this stick is um, a little bit harder than the Lancome or Makeup Forever. It's not like impossible to blend with a beauty blender, but it definitely blends more effortlessly with a brush. So I think my second layer will be with a brush. Yeah, and I definitely got um, about 
a light coverage just because my acne right here you can still see it and see the color so I'm gonna go ahead and try to build this up Okay, so even with a second layer of foundation, I would not consider this full coverage. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but my acne that I have right here, it's still kind of peeking through. You can still kind of see the redness in it. Um, as for the finish, it was supposed to be like a satin. I think it's a little matte, although there is a few like kind of shiny areas. So I guess it is like satin radiant. As for natural... I don't know about that. I feel like when I look at it, you can pretty much see that it's foundation. And I'll zoom you guys in to what it looks like, but I have a few um, dry patches where it's kind of clinging. Um, it's not clinging horrendously, but it is still kind of clinging. So let me go ahead and zoom you guys in so I can show you that. So yeah, um, I kind of have like some minuscule dry patches along my chin and kind of around the outer portion of my mouth as I'm showing you here. So it is kind of clinging to those slightly, so I'm not really loving that right now. So, so far this foundation is iffy, <laughs> at least for me. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and then I'll come back just to kind of give you guys my final thoughts for right now. Okay, so now that that's all said and done, I've took a look at myself in the mirror and I actually think once everything is on, the foundation actually looks really nice. Again, I do set with a setting spray, so all the dry areas that I had seen before, I think the setting spray kind of helped to pretty much minimize those dry areas. So now the foundation looks completely fine. Like, upon looking at my skin, um, nothing is overly... Um, dry or looking really dry so right now my skin is looking pretty good hopefully I can show you guys the time yeah as I showed you it's 907 so we're just gonna go ahead and call the check-in time 9 so as of right now I think the foundation's looking pretty good um, first impressions it went on dry like I said some of the uh, it was a little bit hard to work with even with a brush it took a little bit more to blend it wasn't as soft as I would like it to be and it did cling to some of my dry patches. After I've done all my makeup, it looks fine. Wouldn't say it looks like skin though. Um, just saying, I can pretty much tell that I have foundation on. But yeah, those are my first impressions. So I'm going to go ahead and do the 8-hour wear test per usual. And I'll check in, let you guys know what changes, what doesn't. So stay tuned. Okay, so it is now 2.50 p.m., so it's been about six hours, yeah, since I've worn this foundation. I really wish I could do check-ins, like, sooner, but it's just really hard with my workplace to kind of get away and kind of find a spot to really do a check-in. So sorry that these check-ins are coming in pretty late. Um, I wish the camera would pick it up, but I'm actually um, pretty oily right now. I'm not, like, horrendously oily at the six-hour mark, so that's really good. Um, but I am oily, but it's, it's just not picking up on camera. Like, I'm looking at the viewfinder, and, like, you can tell that there's a shine, but I feel like in real life, it's a lot more oily than it's translating. But everything else, though, looks really good. I don't know, this foundation was weird. It, like, went on, like, kind of funky, and, like, it kind of emphasized my dry areas. But now that it's kind of sat on my skin, it looks pretty good. The only areas that I have for concern are, again, this kind of area in my chin. But I feel like it's been happening a lot with foundations. I don't know if just that area is really dry. I've, like, tried exfoliating it and moisturizing it, but it's still pretty dry. Um, my smile lines are also starting to peek through. And then I have a little bit of a dry area up here where the foundation has kind of clung. But it's very, very minimal. So I'll zoom in and show you guys that. But other than that, I think this foundation is doing really, really great. Like, I'm actually really liking it right now. Um, yeah, I feel like there's not separation, really. It, like, other than that little chin area that I told you about. But everything else just looks really good. I feel like if I just powdered or blotted, it'd be fine. I'm really tempted to, just because I'm the type of person where I don't mind doing that. Like, if my foundation gets a little oily, I'll just blot. Or, like, you know, put some more powder. I know some people, that's, like, a really big thing that they don't like their foundations to do. So just keep in mind that if you want a foundation that's going to stay 100%, like, matte the whole day, this isn't it. But let me zoom you guys in. That way you guys can see kind of the areas that I'm talking about. 
Okay, so down here is kind of like that chin area that I was telling you about. So yeah, as you can see, it kind of separated a bit in that like middle area in my chin. I just feel like that area has just been really dry lately. And then my smile lines, as you can see, they're pretty much poking through on both sides. Um, the nose area doesn't look too bad. I mean, you be the judge. I don't think it looks too bad. Rest of my skin, I think, looks really good. You can still see my blush and bronzer really good. And then, uh, let me see if it'll focus on the forehead. As you guys can see at the very top of my forehead, I do have a few dry patches that it kind of clung to. But the rest of my face, I think we're looking good, aside from the little oils. I feel like now you can, now that I'm zoomed in, you can kind of see the oils a bit more. But other than that, everything looks pretty good to me, anyway. Alright, so the next check-in I'll do is in two hours, so that'll be the full eight-hour wear, and then I'll give you guys my final thoughts, whether or not I whether or not I think it hit the claims and everything else. But yeah, so far I think we're doing real good. Okay, so it's currently for where is the time? It is currently 4.45, so this check-in is going to be a little bit before 5. I hope you guys don't mind, but I do need to work out, and it's like now or never. Like, if I don't do it now, I'm just not going to work out. So this is what my face is looking like at the end of 8 hours. Um, I looked in the mirror already. I still think it looks the same as pretty much the 6-hour mark. I know I wish my check-ins were a little bit more evenly spaced, but, you know, it is what it is. But it basically still looks the same. I didn't get any oilier. Um, so that's good. And my skin, yeah, just looks the same. Honestly, I think it looks really good. I'm actually really impressed with this foundation in the end. Like I said, it was totally weird in the beginning. I was totally like, this foundation isn't gonna work for me. But as the day went on, I feel like it kind of balanced or like stabilized with my skin. It did a really nice job. Again, smile lines there, a little bit of that dry patchy area. So I would say that maybe if you have like extreme dry patches, this foundation like maybe iffy for you but as for me I pretty much have like combo skin more towards the oily side I think it worked pretty well with my skin so as for the claims we said that it would have buildable coverage I would agree with that but it's I'm kinda like on the fence about it because it does build but I feel like in order to build it to a true full coverage you'd have to use a lot of the stick at least for me and it's like 46 bucks and you don't get a lot of grams in it so I feel like you can build it, definitely, but I feel like the more you build it, the more product you waste, and also the less, like, skin it looks. So, yes, it's buildable, but it probably won't look the best, and you're wasting a ton of product in order to get it to a true full coverage. Because what I did today is I still wouldn't even consider this full coverage. As you saw in the beginning, you could still kind of see my acne peeking through, and I had to go back in with concealer. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, so even with two like layers of it it still wasn't full coverage and I wouldn't even dare go to a third layer just because I feel like at that point it would just look really really cakey uh whether or not it had satin natural and radiant finish yeah I would say it did um the finish was very very natural and satinish um and radiant you know so yeah I'll, I'll give it that it also said it had smart technology that was like moisture and oil control. I honestly think that's a baloney. I don't think that that this foundation does that at all as you can tell, like, there was no oil control. Like, I got oily and I had dry spots that didn't get moisturized. So I think that's baloney. I don't think that's true at all for this foundation. At least for me, maybe to someone out there, they're like, girl, you lying. That foundation did all that jazz for me. But at least to me... I think that's fake. This foundation didn't do that. And finally, they said that this was going to be water, sweat, and humidity resistant. You know what? I will give it that. I think it really is because um, I am in an air-conditioned office all day. I have that privilege. But I do step out, you know, to go to my car. And today it was a little hot. It was in like the 87s, you know. And so I was like out and about for a bit. And I do sweat. I'm naturally oily. And I do think it's resistant. Do I think it's bulletproof? No, but I feel like for my oily skin and for the like very short amount of time that I was out walking around the heat, I think it did pretty well. It didn't break up on me. Like I've had foundations where the second I get oily or like perspire, they just kind of like break off into sections and stuff. This didn't do that. So I totally believe in that claim. Now, if you're going to walk all day from heat and you know, it's like 120 degrees hotter than like the Satan's balls, you know, I don't know if this foundation will do that. So, in conclusion, I will give this foundation four stars out of five. 
yeah, I really like this foundation. I am still not sure if I personally would repurchase it. I think I would, just because the price is like 46 bucks. Oh my god. But I think it's my favorite stick foundation that I have so far. So if I were to rate it on a scale of 1 to 3 from the stick foundations that I do have, it's Bobbi Brown is number 1, Lancome is second. They're very, very close. Um... I think the only difference between the Lancome one and the Bobbi Brown one is I feel like the Lancome one clung way more to my dry patches than the Bobbi Brown one did. And then the Makeup Forever one would be at the very bottom, even though the Makeup Forever one is the best value um, for how much grams you get and how much you pay. But I just feel like the Makeup Forever one does not look as nice as the Bobbi Brown or the Lancome one on the skin. It does look nice, but I feel like it doesn't look as nice. So that's my rating scale, one, two, three. The only other stick foundation that is at Sephora that I know of is the Hourglass one. That's kind of the only one I have left to try. Not sure if I'll try it though, just because I heard that it's not the best on oily skin. And that price per gram is ridiculous, though. Alrighty, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed my foundation review of the Bobbi Brown Foundation Stick. Please give this video a like if you haven't already. Go ahead and leave a comment down below whether you think this foundation was worth it, whether you'll pick it up, whether or not you've tried it before. And if you did, if you liked it, please let me know. I love hearing other people's opinions. And uh, until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Adios.